Here's Brody Brazil. Well, it's definitely an interesting contrast right now. We're at a time where not a lot of prominent people are commenting regularly about the Howard Terminal situation. But on the flip side, there are some other notable individuals who have been recently quoted about the A's and potential relocation to Las Vegas, including George Brett and Jason Giambi, who I'll discuss a couple minutes after Brett. But before any of that, I need to explain that the reason these quotes and comments are even out there is because big league teams for the last couple weekends have been playing exhibition games at the Las Vegas Aviators ballpark. So that's why they're in town. That's why they're talking to the media. And that's why we now have this material to discuss. And let's begin with George Brett, obviously in town with the Royals as part of their staff. Here's what he said in the newspaper. This is from the Las Vegas Review Journal, which I want to say is a journalism outlet, but they're also from Las Vegas, so they're certainly going to see that side of it. They say the Kansas City Royals legend who watched the team play the Colorado Rockies at Las Vegas Ballpark this weekend is a big fan of the city. Here's Brett's quote. I love this town, but I can only take it for three days at a time. Three days and I'm gone. It's the greatest city in the world, but only for three days, end quote. So what about a 180-day baseball season? You're thinking people don't want to stay there for more than three at a time? No, George, I get it. That's great life advice, right? Especially as you get older, you look back on your younger years. Yeah, more than two nights in Las Vegas, uh, depending on what your ambitions are, eh, probably not the best uh, prudent idea when you think about all the things and all the fun to be had in Las Vegas and how it can eventually take its toll. I, I understand what he's saying. Uh, interesting way to start his quote in the newspaper, but it goes on. Count Brett among those in support of the Oakland Athletics relocating to Las Vegas. Quote, they should come here. I was talking to some guys earlier and I said if I was in the Oakland organization, I'd rather play AAA than in the big leagues. End quote. Obviously, the Aviators play in Las Vegas. They're Oakland's AAA affiliate. And I I just want to say, I mean, that is an older person who's played big league baseball looking back on it. That's never the perspective of any young person trying to escalate themselves in the game. So um, I want context to be understood there. He's not serious about that. I think he's trying to make a point. Uh, Not benefiting Oakland, certainly, but talking about perspective and his preference for the two towns side by side. But then he goes on to say this, that stadium is terrible. Obviously talking about the Coliseum, terrible. And this is beautiful. And you've got Las Vegas compared to Oakland. Put it this way, I'm not going to Oakland on vacation. I'm coming to Vegas. End quote. Okay. I think this is the point where, you know, George, you're you're not from Las Vegas. You're not from Oakland. Now you're using one to put down the other. I don't know that that was either called for, necessary. Is that too far across the line? It's it's bordering on some things. It's bordering on some things. But uh, that's what George Brett said. And look, I don't I don't think anybody's here to argue the fact that. Las Vegas is a tourist destination. Uh, The Bay Area, let's just forget Oakland for a second. Let's go to the bigger picture of the Bay Area, which, you know, San Francisco, Oakland, San Jose. Uh, That's not necessarily a place that a lot of tourists visit. Of course, some do. They go to Monterey or Tahoe or wine country, or they're visiting the immediate Bay Area. But I don't know that uh, the Bay Area, and specifically Oakland, they've never been known to be the tourist destination that Las Vegas is. That's not what the Bay Area is aimed for. People live here. People work here. People raise a family here. People do well here. So it's it's kind of the weird thing to say, again, when you're not from either place, but you're taking that stance. Yeah, granted, I think most people from across the world, if you said, you know, pick this or this for a vacation, like one is designed to be a vacation spot, but is that also the best spot for a big league baseball team. We'll get into that topic a little bit later on. So that quote definitely stood out from George Brett. Brett and his three sons make an annual trip to Allegiant Stadium for the Kansas City versus Raiders game and has been coming to the city for years and loved attending major boxing cards. 
Quote, I come here every year when Kansas City plays the Raiders and I bring my three kids, and that's trouble. And I'm 69 years old, so I don't know what it would be like in your prime at 27 coming to Vegas, end quote. <laughs> okay, I mean, I, I think, George, at some point you, you might have made the trip out to Las Vegas in all of your travels, in all of your years. Um, and also this, I, I come here every year when, when the Raiders play Kansas City. I mean, how long have the Raiders been in Las Vegas for again? I think the first year fans weren't even allow, allowed. So you come out for boxing, and, and you've, you've made plenty of trips, but then why are you saying that you don't know what it would have been like in your prime at 27? You didn't come out here before, and now you're 70 years old and you're, you're getting in trouble with your kids? Oh, look, I'm not here to critique George Brett. Come on, that's not, that's not what this is about. I'm, I'm just putting, I'm literally reading too far into every word uh, from these quotes. But again, I think George Brett's a person who's saying, yeah, I'd love a baseball team here. It'd be so wild because I can't even stand it for three days. It'd be that wild. All right. That seems uh, less than sustainable. Okay, and then there's what Jason Giambi said, and I realize this might hit differently for A's fans. Obviously, Big G was part of the A's in the 2000s. I'm pretty sure he's also a Las Vegas transplant, like he lives down there in the metropolitan region, so... He's got some different connections, like maybe way more than George Brett, but I still want to remind everybody, the Bay Area and Oakland specifically were never Jason's birthplace or where he's from, or he only spent some of his playing years living here. And I don't even know if that was full-time for sure. Um, But he's got some experience here. Maybe he better understands this situation. So here's what Jason said, again, in the Las Vegas Review Journal, which says this to begin, Giambi said despite Las Vegas's ever-growing pro sports portfolio, there is more than enough fan support to go, go around. Quote, they're dying to support baseball. You have so many transplants, but I think that people want to have a home team. We've turned into a legitimately big city. We're starting to become like L.A., We can support all these teams. I don't see any of them going away anytime soon, end quote. Now, I know it might feel like a boom. I know it might feel like a big city. You've got the hotels. You've got some high rises. You've got entertainment. You've got big events coming to Las Vegas. You know what media market Las Vegas is? Do you know what media market Los Angeles is? I mean, it's not just Los Angeles. Like, think about just Southern California minus San Diego. Like how many miles and, and width and 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 depth and it's just how many people. It's it's crazy. Los Angeles, I can't even, even wrap my brain around this. Los Angeles is huge. Las Vegas in comparison is tiny. But again, Las Vegas could have multiple NFL teams, multiple NBA teams, uh, two big league baseball teams. I'm not even sure that Las Vegas can can do all of the pro sports leagues, MLB, NFL, NBA, obviously NHL. They've got two of the four right now, two of the big four. Um, I know it feels that way, but if you step back and look at the satellite view, literally, uh, it's not that way. I'm not faulting Jason for feeling that way, but perspective. Giambi was at Saturday's Cactus League game with his traveling youth baseball team, the Henderson Hawks, and was torn, though, saying he felt for, quote, some of the greatest fans in the world, end quote, with an A's move. He's talking about Oakland baseball fans. And by the way, I did not find this quote in the Las Vegas Review Journal. I found this from a Paul Gutierrez article on ESPN.com. So now he's talking about the contrast between Oakland and Las Vegas and what the A's really need to do, quote, but also to be relevant anymore in baseball, you have to be competitive. End quote. And that's the that's the thing that I most want to agree with here. The A's are trying for a new ballpark so that their franchise can be competitive with others, so that they can have the attraction and the venue for even players to train at. You know what the weight room at the Coliseum looks like? Not great. Actually, the visiting weight room has never been great. Now, the A's weight room is actually their old clubhouse slash locker room. Like they found interesting ways to upgrade the stadium, but it is so far behind the times. And that's just from the player perspective. I'm talking about from the actual 
fan experience. They need to be competitive. Howard Terminal does it. The Oakland Coliseum, no matter how much you could ever fix it up, will not do that. Let's go back to the Las Vegas Review Journal. The big quote from Giambi, quote, I came here, Las Vegas, as a AAA player, and it was the best five days of my life. Here we go again with those single-digit days. Are you kidding me, he laughed? There's nothing like it. You can wake up in the middle of the night, 2 o'clock in the morning, go get breakfast, go watch a show, anything you want to do. It's a little bit of the wild, wild west. It's not like that anywhere else. Is that what you want your baseball players to be doing regularly with (laughs) Waking up at 2 in the morning. Again, J- Jason is removed from the playing days and probably lived his playing days like that, too, to a certain degree. Uh, look, I, we're, all, we're all stretching every corner of this possible, but I understand what he's saying. Look, I understand if this is Las Vegas for your bachelor party. It's a little bit different when you're operating as a professional baseball player in Las Vegas. I don't, I don't know that you do this... All the time or even ever. But yeah, certainly that that does exist. Okay, so what are my takeaways from all of this? What George Brett said, what Jason Giambi said. Number one, you have to understand the context here. They were in Las Vegas for a couple days. They were asked very leading questions, right? Like people want to know, what do you think about this? Well, you're here. You're in baseball. I know you're not necessarily a front office person or... Not even really a fan because you played the game. So you're, how do you see this? I'll also tell you that I was a person who on this YouTube channel played you some of Bryce Harper recently talking about the Las Vegas situation with the A's and relocation or an expansion team for Las Vegas. He preferred expansion. He made that very clear. But that's my next point here. Bryce Harper is a Las Vegas native. All of his young years, born and raised all through college, Bryce Harper has a say in this because he's from there. Giambi and Brett are neither from Las Vegas or Oakland. Like, they didn't grow up there. They're not from there. Giambi, I think, lives there now. But they don't have a real rooted connection in either place. So on one hand, you could say maybe they're impartial. But on another hand, maybe they can just speak wildly because they don't care that much. Right? About either side of it. But I want to go back to this. They were, they were at, and I don't, I don't mind the question. That's what the media is going to do. You're here. I want to talk about this. You're somebody to talk to. Not a lot of other people are talking about this. I don't mind the questioning, but what else did you think they were going to say? And if somebody said, let me, let me do this. If somebody said, you know, I don't think a team belongs here. I don't think, I don't think Major League Baseball works in Las Vegas. Do you think that quote would have ever seen the light of day? And the answer is no. Both of them admitted Vegas fatigue, like Giambi said, hey, my five days here. I mean, there's a reason he said that. And Brett said, oh, you know, I can't do this. It's the greatest city in the world, but for three days at a time. And I'm I'm kidding about, well, how are you going to play a 180 game season, 180 day season, 81 home games, if you can only stand three at a time? I'm kind of kidding. But I'm also kind of serious about the visiting aspect as well as the players who are going to live in Las Vegas. And look, certainly AAA players do just fine there. You don't hear a lot of problems. There's no you know, big deal about that. But um, it's interesting, right? This is an int- you've We've never seen a sport like baseball, an everyday sport like baseball, go into a market like Las Vegas. I also want to say that when you hear anybody bring up the, the tourist thing, like, hey, you could come visit here, and we're going to draw a lot of fans because of the tourists. Um, I don't I don't know that a tourist fan base is the best case option. I don't know how how exactly sustainable that is, especially for baseball. Again, 81 home dates in probably what, like, I guess, 90 or so uh, days. You're obviously on the road to 180 total days, but um, you're playing a lot of when the team is home, you're playing a lot of games in these summer months. And I just, I just don't know if it ever makes sense to totally rely on visitors to fill up your seats and have your fan base versus the people who actually live there 365 days out of the year. We've never really gone down um, that road before. Like, And don't get me wrong. I know the Raiders are there. How many home games do they play? Eight, nine a year with exhibition. 
Uh, how many home games do the Golden Knights play every year? 41 regular season plus some playoff games, exhibition. We've never seen 81 plus year after year after year, especially in the summer, uh, especially you would think in a dome. I, I don't know. Don't know how you could do it outside. So the tourist fan base, it's great. Like it'll add, it'll add to what your fan base is, but I don't think it could be the foundation of your fan base. Another thing to consider is this, whenever you hear players talking about city versus city, I mean, this is their job, first off. This is not their passion like it is yours and mine. They're not from here or there. They come to play in a city that signs them. They didn't really have a choice half the time. If you weren't a free agent, right, you were traded or drafted by a team. So you're there because of work. Now, sometimes players make bonds with cities and they really get it. They get entrenched. They spend their entire career there. But it's rare that a player is part of a team in a region where they grew up. And so you're always going to hear players talking about cities uh, very casually because it doesn't matter to them. What matters to them is their next contract and how many contracts they can get in the course of a career. So I do caution everybody to think that, well, this is coming from this person or that person. It, it doesn't really matter. And I'm not here to discredit what every player says about franchises and relocation. But yeah, of course, if it comes from Bryce Harper, of course, he played in, in Washington, plays right now with the Phillies, but he's from Las Vegas. That's where his heart is. That's why what he says matters. And no offense to George Brett or Jason Giambi, but what they say about this situation like, doesn't carry the same weight. So hopefully some of that made sense. Uh, I know that was a lot a uh, video for just a couple quotes, but I wanted you to see those. And let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that I can see you next time.